This is Together Goshen Day, and I'm Caleb Longenecker Fox with the Alumni Office. Really excited to have John Roth joining us here. Hey, John, how are you doing? I'm doing okay, Caleb. Thanks. How about you? Good. It's good to see your face again. It's it's been a while. Right. I miss I miss the faces on the sidewalks and the faces in the classroom and my colleagues. It's a, these are strange times. <laughs> well, these strange times are what I want to ask you about. I know that you you're a long-standing faculty member. So many people, so many alum and friends know Goshen College, know you and know your face, have read your stories, have been in your classes. I know that you're recently, a lot of your role has kind of transitioned out of some of the teaching mode. Could you tell us a little bit about how you're spending your time and, and particularly how you're spending your time now? Right. Well, it's true that my, the nature of my job has changed a bit in the last uh, five or six years. Um, I love the classroom. I still consider myself a classroom teacher. But uh, over the past few years, I've become more actively involved in Mennonite World Conference and also with projects related to the Institute for the Study of Global Anabaptism. And uh, those uh, projects have involved a lot of travel. So I was anticipating, I think there were maybe four international trips that were coming up uh, in April and May. And it's... Uh, those, all of those trips were canceled, of course. Mm -hmm. And so um, that gave me a little more flexibility than I might have had otherwise for um, adjusting and, and adapting to new roles. So um, I've tried to stay connected with my, uh, my global friends and with Mennonite World Conference. So it's a lot of Zoom calls. Mm -hmm. uh, I have continued to be active with uh, the history seminar class, which is kind of the capstone history project. And so we just recently finished up uh, the Zoom presentations that students gave on their seminar classes. And I guess in general, we're all just adjusting to a uh, life that uh, has many more virtual meet meetings, <laughs> uh, which is also okay. Yeah, I, I know that in, in talking with you before, you really become a world traveler in, in this work too. How are, what is the, the feeling or sense, the scope of the COVID impact with the world church? Yeah. Do you have a sense for that? Well, uh, a, a bit of a sense at least. I, I think on the one hand, um, it has helped make North Americans and Europeans a little bit more aware of what it's like to be vulnerable in ways that we're not used to. So um, I, I think there are ways in which we can identify a little more closely with the uncertainty that many people around the world face in regards to the future, to their health. Um, on the other hand, uh, I think that even if people here have, are facing tough times, unemployment, uncertainty about the future, the scope of the challenge remains even more significant among many of my global friends. People are talking about food vulnerability. Um, I talked to someone in Burkina Faso recently who said we are now eating the seed corn that we had set aside for planting, and once you start doing that, you recognize just how much the, on the margins people are living. So um, yes, we're vulnerable, but things are even more challenging uh, for many people around the world. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. It's a good reminder. Is, I'm curious, what, what's your, what is your hope for the future? through all of this. Right, well, you know, it's a challenge to even think about the future, and that's, that's yeah. sort of the, one of the frustrations of this new reality, is that um, I, we, we're, we're so used to looking at our day planners, looking at our calendars, and thinking about a horizon that is, is out there, and then living into that, and right now, the horizon seems pretty blurry. Um, you know, when we started this, I was thinking, oh, end of April, we'll be back to it. Right. But then end of May, yeah. 
Well, I think that probably was unrealistic. And uh, I've been reading quite a bit that says, no, we won't, there, there won't be a return to the way things were, that there will be some things about our lives that are, that are changed. So um, I, I think it's a challenge to, to think with confidence uh, about the future. You know, at the same time, I've seen so many expressions of goodwill and um, mutual aid of uh, people attentive to the well-being of other people. And if some sense of that um, compassion uh, continues going forward, even once COVID-19 is a distant memory, that would be a wonderful, beautiful thing. So we can hope for that. Any parting words of wisdom or... Um, advice that you want to send out to our alumni and friends networks? Well, as we look ahead to this special day on Tuesday, um, I would really encourage all of us, particularly the uh, alumni of Goshen College, almost all of us benefited in some way from the gifts of other people in uh, covering our tuition and room and board. Uh, and this is a great opportunity uh, for us now to give back in some small way to those students that are coming along in the next generation. Uh, the cost of education continues to go up. We've tried hard to keep it under control, but uh, just across the board, education has become more and more expensive. And that means that students rely increasingly on outside sources of, of supplementary funding. And uh, if you can give back to Goshen, uh, on this special day on Tuesday, know that you are helping to transform uh, the lives of another generation of students coming along who are committed uh, to culture for service. So give, give generously, give joyfully, and continue to support Goshen College. Great. Well, thanks for that message, John, and thanks for your time. It's just great seeing you again and, and hearing, hearing you and hearing your stories. They, they never get old. Good to see you, Caleb. Take care. Thanks. Take care. Bye.